Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. How to upgrade Ubuntu via SSH. After you log in into your VPS via SSH, you could probably get this prompt message alerting you that a new version of your currently installed OS is available. Great, I guess we could do an upgrade, but hold on a second. Triggering a release upgrade via SSH is not recommended and could cause some serious issues to your VPS. Unfortunately, if you're like me and you don't have a physical access to your server, upgrading via SSH is the only viable way. So let's take a look on how to do it safely and trying to prevent all the possible issues we could encounter. Before starting, always do three absolutely important steps. Step 1. Create a snapshot of your VPS. A snapshot is a complete copy of your VPS file system at the time of the trigger snapshot command. This snapshot is a perfect fingerprint of your current system, which can be used to create another VPS as a clone or restore a damaged VPS by loading the previous snapshot. Skysilk offers a built-in snapshot solution right inside your administration panel. Step 2. Create a backup. A backup is a copy of your data inside the VPS. Differently from the snapshot, a backup is not hierarchical and doesn't get triggered as a version control of your VPS. Even if this seems like an overkill and snapshots and backups seem almost identical, always do also a backup. Better safe than sorry. And also this option is available in the Skysilk administration panel, which is super handy. Step 3. Install the screen package on your VPS. Check if you have the screen package installed in your VPS and if you don't, type sudo apt get install screen. Screen is a terminal multiplexer that emulates virtual terminals in your Ubuntu installation. To put it simply, whenever you connect to your VPS, a new terminal emulator will wrap around your current session. And if by accident your connection gets interrupted or you close your terminal during the execution of a command, you can restore that session by typing screen R. This is really important because during a release upgrade, it's pretty normal for the VPS to get rebooted or lose the SSH connection, and if that happens, you need a way to log in back again and restore the currently ongoing session without force stopping your VPS. After doing these three steps, we can pretty sure to have covered ourselves for any bad scenario, so let's do this. Let's type do-release-upgrade without sudo or any other special command. A prompt message will tell us that because we're doing the upgrade via SSH, an additional temporary daemon will be started on port 1022. Just in case something goes wrong, we'll be able to access the VPS with another SSH connection pointing to that port. Since we're running a firewall, is it recommended to specifically open that port, since the upgrade daemon cannot do that by itself? Let's copy the suggested IP tables command and then interrupt the upgrade command by hitting Ctrl X on our keyboard. Paste the previously copied command as sudo and hit enter. Perfect! Now we can trigger once again our do-release-upgrade command. The process is actually really boring, nothing too excited happens, and the number of prompts or actions required depend on the amount of packages you have installed and customized in your VPS. In my case, only the OpenSSL config file required an action. Everything else went smoothly, meaning the upgraded packages weren't overriding any customized options or file I had. Bear in mind, this process can be very long, and it could go on even for an hour. If the prompt in your terminal gets stuck on a specific package and doesn't move for many many minutes, you can check that the process didn't randomly crash by opening another terminal instance, SSH into your VPS and type in sudo screen R to restore the current session. If everything goes accordingly, it means that the upgrade process is still working in the background and you should just wait. 
My upgrade went pretty smoothly and I didn't encounter any issue. If something breaks down, the upgrade process crashes and you cannot access back your VPS via SSH, those backups and snapshots we did at the beginning will come in handy. After the upgrade, if everything went smoothly, if you try to access your VPS address from the browser, you'll probably see a 502 bad gateway. This happens because some of the packages we're using were upgraded and in some of our config files we're probably still referring to old versions of those packages. In my case, because I know exactly what I have installed in my VPS, I suspected it was probably the PHP version not matching what I wrote in the nginx config file. But let's troubleshoot it together. First, let's check if the firewalls is still up and it's serving the proper ports as we set up in previous videos. Let's take a look with the command sudo ufw status. The firewall is active and the port configuration looks good. Great. Let's now check the status of our server by typing systemctl status nginx. Also, our server is up and running as expected. We can always reload it just to be sure something is not blocking it by typing sudo systemctl reload nginx. Now let's check if we still have our index file in the HTML folder of our server. Let's type cd forward slash var forward slash www forward slash HTML and hit enter. Once we're in this location, let's type ls to list all the files. Our index.php file is there as expected. So finally, it's time to check one last thing, the nginx config file that serves our default sites. Let's type sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash sites dash available forward slash default. We previously edited this file in another tutorial to properly hook it up to our version of PHP, version 7.1 at the time of that recording. During the upgrade, our PHP version was replaced by the newly released 7.2. I know this because I checked the differences and upgraded packages versions of all the stuff I installed in my VPS before doing the upgrade, but you can always check the current PHP version installed by typing php dash dash version. Let's scroll down until we reach the section where we define our PHP FPM version and let's replace it with the upgraded ones. Let's save the file with control plus O and then close it with control plus X. Let's reload once again nginx with the previous command. Now, if we access our site URL, ta-da, our site should be up and running with everything working properly and our system fully upgraded. Well, it's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I talk to you in the next one.